I'm going to put my gloves on this this time because uh, we're going to use our flux here. So that's acid, so you use safety glasses and gloves. Right, because uh, uh, the stuff will uh, irritate your hands, and if you get it in your eyes, it burns. So um, we just want to protect ourselves from that. Now, normally, I have to flux both the fitting and the pipe, so I'm just going to start out with the fitting. And I don't need a lot of flux in there. I just want to coat it. I don't need to have a huge amount in there. Now, in here, I got to get my orientation right because I'm going to mount my L there, and I've got my screws there that are mounting there, my stub out coming out here, so I want to make sure that's in the right location. You know, Joe, sometimes I, I notice with these brass fittings, they're not perfect, and um, sometimes they're loose and sometimes they're tight, and I've had pipes actually fall out once I put them in there. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a big problem, because when you're assembling everything here and it's all falling apart on you, it's hard to keep everything square and uh, looking good. So what I'm going to do here, I'll show you a little trick. Um, normally when I put this together here, as I'm soldering it or trying to hold it, this thing's flopping around. I could pick it up, this could fall off as I'm heating it. So uh, to help prevent that, I'm going to just, uh, just, just use my channel locks here. And these fittings here are, can actually crack if I squeeze them too hard. So I'm not going to squeeze these hard, but what all I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little pressure on these. And I'm going to try to egg the fitting just a little bit here. So when I do that, I can just turn this. Actually, it's locked down there pretty good right now. So that pipe, when I hold it there, won't fall out. Now this one here is already loose. I can feel it wiggling around. So I'm going to do the same thing to that. So the idea is you crimp it a little bit, and then you twist it? Right, because I'm actually kind of making the fitting is round, and I'm kind of making it go egg shape. And then I'm going to turn this, and it kind of creates a little friction point there. So what happens to the space in between the fitting and the pipe? It's a little off now, so the solder is just going to flow into that and fill right, it? Right, right. It, it's a minute amount, and, and the solder will fill that up easily. So Great. now this will stay together. So Great. I'll assemble the next piece here. Okay. How much flux do you actually put on the pipe, Joe? Uh, are you trying to get the, the flux so it comes out beyond the fitting or to the fitting? Actually, all I'm doing is just putting a ring around actually the width of the fitting where it's actually going into the socket here. Okay. I don't need a lot of extra flux. Um, I just want to coat it. I want to make sure that the whole pipe is, is coated, and so the fitting, the fitting also is coated. So. Okay. And I'll egg these again. So you don't want to have a quarter of an inch or half an inch of flux on the outside of the fitting once it's installed? No, because uh, when we go to solder, it, it's going to generate some problems. We're going to, our solder is going to want to follow the, the flux as it warms up. So if I've got flux running all over my pipe, that solder can follow that. So okay. I'm going to try to keep this as clean as I can. So now you're going to uh, solder these right on the bench? Right. I'm just going to set these right up here. And uh, normally I can just find these right in the, in the field. I'll just grab some 2 by 4s that are around, cut up some blocks. And We did put a fire extinguisher here, and that's a good idea when you're doing absolutely. plumbing at home. It's, it's a must. And we've got a fireproof cloth there to protect the bench. I'll just set that back down at that end there. Now, this just supports it. I can get a torch under there. Um, if I have to wipe the fitting, I can get at it. Uh, I don't have to burn anything, and, and it, uh, I don't have to touch it until it's uh, cooled off. So, Joe, I noticed that you didn't put the caps on the end. Well, there's a reason for that. I could do that just as easily right here. I could just put the fitting here and solder that on now, but um, there's a reason for that. When I'm going to solder in, uh, the whole system here, if I have any water that's drip, dripping into the system, it's going to actually generate some steam. And that steam that is actually going to develop pressure and it has to go somewhere. So I just want to, so if I develop any steam, that'll escape out of the center of the pipe. Lead right out of there. Okay. So this will be my last fitting that I'll actually solder together. Okay. Well, we're ready to solder up. 
Oh, before we do, Joe, um, I've been soldering fittings for years, and I noticed in the old days it was a lot easier back when we had lead in solder, and we haven't had lead in solder for a while. Um, what's changed? Well, the big thing that's changed is uh, we're now using 95.5. It's 95% uh, tin and 5% antimony. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other different combinations of it. That's what I'm using today. But basically, it's a lead-free solder. Mm -hmm. uh, the solder that we used to use years ago had lead in it, which had a lower melting point. It was easier to solder with, and it flowed very easily. This flows a little. It doesn't flow quite as fast, so mm -hmm. it's a, and it takes more heat to get it to work. I've uh, switched over to one of these turbo torches with MAP gas, but you know, years ago, I used to use propane, too. Well, with the lead, you probably could get by with it because uh, it, it had a lower melting point. Now, with the 95.5, uh, the temperatures are higher. Um, and because they're, it takes more heat, uh, the map gas works wonderful for it. So, I've had some times when I've used this uh, turbo torch where the, uh, the tip actually got red. Well, what's going on there is when we're feeding it gas here, um, the rate that it's going through, if it's not flowing fast enough, we're not literally pulling in enough atmospheric air to actually keep the tip cool. So we're, we want to bring enough gas in and oxygen in to actually keep the tip cool. So we want to actually crank this up so it's burning faster instead of slower. Mm -hmm. Before you actually start soldering, tell us a little bit about what you're going to try to try to do here. Where does the flame go and so forth? Okay, well what I'm trying to do, um, I want to heat this fitting as evenly as I can. Um, and this fitting, it being that it's small, it's not too difficult to do. So what I would probably do, I'd probably just heat it up in this location here, and I'm actually going to be heating both sides. Okay. My solder is actually going to be my temperature gauge. So once I get it in, up to temperature, I can flow my solder on there, and I can keep the heat on there until it can, you know, to keep it flowing. Okay. And once I have this joint filled with solder, I can continue to the next one here. Okay, so you Basically, apply heat to the bottom, let the heat rise, and then uh, it'll melt the solder. Right. That, that's the normal flow of it, that the heat's going to want to rise. On, on the small fitting, it's really not that critical, but that's basically what's going to happen here. You know, and I know on this particular torch that they, they, they make a big deal about orientation, that you can't tip the, you can lay the tank over on its side, but you can't tip it upside down. Right. If I do this, I can get a flare up because the, the raw fuel, instead of uh, vaporizing, I'm just going to get raw fuel down here, and I'm going to get a huge flame. So I'm going to try to maintain a uniform position here so I don't get flare up. So I'm not going to be doing this. So I'm just going to try to set it in here, lay it in here until it gets warm enough, and just solder it. Okay. And when it heats up, I'm just going to bring it in for more heat, pull it away for less heat. Okay. Why don't you solder one fitting and uh, watch you do that, and I may have some more questions I'll okay. ask you. That's one. You know, um, you seem to know exactly when to apply the solder and so forth. What, do you, what exactly are you looking for there? Well, there's two things I'm really looking for. Uh, when I was rolling the solder around like this, this is actually my temperature gauge again, and I can feel that it's actually melting. But if you look at the pipe here, you can see that it's starting to change colors here. Uh, the brass fitting is actually starting to change color also. You're getting this fitting fairly hot. And if you start turning it blue or actually turning it black, you're overheating it. What's, what's the consequences of uh, overheating a fitting like this? Well, at that point, the flux that I put on there, I'm going to actually burn that out. It's not going to protect the, the uh, pipe and the fitting, so they're actually going to oxidize in there, and the, the solder won't take in there. So if I could open up that fitting and look at it, inside it wouldn't be there. It would just be a black, kind of a black spot, so we'd probably have a leak. I'll let you do the other one. Okay. Okay. 